Following on from the video of how to generate a, an identity from De Moivre, um, we're going to use that identity now to solve an equation like the one um, on the screen. So 16x to the 5 minus 20x cubed plus 5x equals 0.5. OK, um, equations with x to the 5 are not terribly easy to solve. So, from the last video, we know that we can write cos of 5 theta as 16 cos to the 5 theta minus 20 cos cubed theta plus 5 cos theta. Okay, so hopefully uh, you can see that I've chosen this equation quite deliberately. So what I have here is the same coefficients and powers in the left-hand side of the equation as I have in this side of the um, identity. Okay, now the variable's not the same. So in the identity I've got here, the variable is cos theta, and here the variable is, is x. But if I just take the step of saying let x be cos theta. Okay, so the variable for which I'm trying to solve is x. This is the equation I'm trying to solve. My solutions will be of the form x equals. x equals some number or other. Okay, but we're going to get to it using the trig identity. So we've got x equals cos theta. So now, in the original equation, if I substitute in cos theta everywhere it says x, then my equation becomes 16 cos to the 5 theta minus 20 cos cubed theta plus 5 cos theta equals 0.5. Okay, now this left-hand side of my equation matches up with this side of the identity. The whole point of proving the identity was that those um, two sides of that identity are the same for all values of theta. I can replace one with the other. Therefore, if I've got this left-hand side of my equation down here, okay, I know that that is identical to cos of the multiple angle 5 theta, so I can replace the whole left-hand side of my equation with cos of 5 theta equals 0.5. I do need to remember that in solving this equation here, I'm going to generate values for theta. What I want are values for x, so I need to go back to my original supposition that x equals cos theta. When I've got values for theta, I need to find their cosine value in order to generate values for x. But now we've got something that looks a little bit more solvable than what we had before. So cos of 5 theta equals 0.5. Therefore, I'm going to take the arc cos of each side. I'm going to get 5 theta equals arc cos 0.5. So 5 theta is going to be arc cos of a half, which is pi over 3, always working in radians here, and every 2n pi radians thereafter, or between 0 and 2 pi, I've got 5 pi over 3 plus 2n pi. These are the infinite solutions. Here I've got the infinite solutions to the equation cos of 5 theta equals a half. Right, in order to get to x, I don't need 5 theta or any theta. So I need a statement which tells me how to find all my possible values of theta. So if 5 theta is pi over 3 plus 2n pi, then theta is pi over 15, dividing both sides of the equation by 5 plus 2n pi over 5. All the other set of solutions come from 5 pi over 15. Hopefully you're happy that I can cancel the 5s on top and bottom to give me pi over 3. And then recurring not every 2n pi, but every 2n pi over 5. OK, this is an equation in x to the 5. I'm expecting 5 solutions, but we're just going to carry on with different possible solutions here until we think we've run out. See how many we've got. So, if I take my first solution, that theta is pi over 15. I don't want a value for theta, I want a value for x x equals cos of theta, so the x value from the original equation is the cosine of pi over 15 radians, giving me two three significant figures, 0.978. So that is a true value of x, a decimal value of x for which that original statement is true, arrived at via complex numbers and trig functions. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to say, well, that was pi over 15. I'm now going to add 2n pi over 5 to give me another solution. So another possible value of theta 
is at pi over 15 plus 2 pi over 5, that should be, sorry, not 15, um, 2 pi over 5. So this is at 7 pi over 15, my next possible value of theta. If that's the possible value of theta, then the corresponding value of x is the cosine of 7 pi over 15, 0 0.105, again to three decimal places. Okay, on a bit of a roll, I'm going to add another 2 pi over 5. So I had pi over 15 plus not 2 pi over 5, but 4 pi over 5, giving me 13 pi over 15, and my possible, my x value, which corresponds to that theta value, cosine of 13 pi over 15, I get negative 0 0.914, so I've got three distinct solutions so far from three different values of theta. If I add another um, 2 pi over 5, I'm going to be outside the normal, I'm going to be um, over uh, pi on my theta value. So I'm not going to do that for the minute. I'm going to take my other set of solutions. So I said that my solutions could be based around pi over 15 or they could be based around pi over 3 from the symmetry of the cosine curve. So I'm going to start with that pi over 3 value now. So when theta takes the value pi over 3, x takes the value cosine pi over 3, which is exactly a half. Okay, now that pi over 3 solution also recurs every 2 pi over 5, so my next possible value for theta is pi over 3 plus 2 pi over 5, giving me a solution at 11 pi over 15, a solution for theta, my solution for x is at the cosine of 11 pi over 15, negative 0 0.669. Okay, what we have then are five distinct solutions for x. Given that this is a polynomial um, with an order of five, that's what I would expect, is five distinct solutions. But if you look at the values of theta that we've got, if I start adding another two-fifths of pi to any of these, we're going to get out of range and we're going to repeat a solution that we've already got. So the five solutions are all the distinct solutions that there are. Those are the values of x for which this original statement is true, arrived at by substituting in a de Moivre identity and therefore making the equation much easier to solve.